uh, I'm doing inverse problems from a mathematical point of view. And um, like today I'm speaking uh, like determination of a Riemannian manifold or wave speeds from the point of view of, of, of machine learning theory. And most of the results here are done in collaboration with Charles Pfefferman, Sergei Ivanov, Yaroslav Kurilev, and Harry Haran Narlanaya. So I will first somehow start with, an, at, uh, with the question that uh, why geometry is useful in imaging problems. Even if you do like practical seismic or, or medical imaging, like why you could use geometric tools to approach this problem. After this introduction, uh, we go to uh, somehow, we go to the problem of somehow learning a manifold. First, we start with the case when we have a, a data with large random errors. We reduce the problem to the case when we have uh, small errors. And then uh, like we do the reconstructions of manifolds. <coughs> so, um, like, um, to consider uh, wave imaging, we consider that as, uh, as an inverse problem for wave equation, where we do measurements somewhere on the boundary of a body. Interior is unknown, and what we are going to uh, somehow want to reconstruct is that how the wave speed varies in the medium. And instead of um, somehow speaking about um, about base speed, we speak about the equivalent concept that is uh, like metric, namely travel time metric. So to start this, that let's consider that we have a, a set M that is in, typically in, in just in three-dimensional uh, space. So for instance, Earth or a medical imaging problem when you have a patient. Also one considers often two-dimensional case that is for mathematical like, like test cases to study different imaging problems. But the real interest here is now three-dimensional uh, like bodies. We want to consider how the waves propagate in certain medium. What is the wave speed in different places? For instance, if we are considering uh, like Earth, we can consider uh, propagation of earthquakes. Uh, or if you do medical imaging, like ultrasound imaging, we want to ask that what is the wave speed in different locations? And this gives information about the materials at this location. So instead of somehow speaking about wave speed, we introduce a concept that is the travel time metric. So uh, we ask that what is the, um, I go to this in the next slide more, more detail, but the travel time metric tells that, that uh, like if you go from one point to another, how much time it takes for the, for the waves. This is equivalent to measuring the wave speed. And this now makes this geometrical problem. How this somehow differs from Euclidean geometry is that if you consider, for instance, roads of earthquakes, what are the fastest roads that the earthquakes can travel? They are not traveling along straight lines. So when we consider, uh, like for instance, imaging of Earth, we are considering how the earthquakes propagate. The fastest road, for instance, from the seismic wave from North Pole to go somewhere at the equator is a, here. A, a curve that is not a straight line, and these are called these fastest paths are called geodesics. Also, when you think like ultrasound imaging, this is the, how the picture usually looks like. Here you have a measurement device that sends uh, uh, sends uh, waves. In reality, the waves propagate along curved paths because the wave speed is varying. <coughs> but the imaging uh, like algorithm assumes when it makes this picture. It makes the picture as if the uh, waves would have traveled along straight lines. So in this picture, this is not, this is not image in Euclidean coordinates. It is imaged in uh, coordinates that are related to wave propagation. And, and this is how this kind of geometry uh, starts to appear. So how we consider this kind of, 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 of images where we somehow use non-physical coordinates. We consider them as, them as manifolds. So man, my manifold is a mathematical concept. You can consider that you have uh, some kind of like, in a high dimensional space, you have some surface that, like this picture is two dimensional, but it could be three dimensional surface in very high dimensional space. And to represent it, you take pieces of this abstract surface, this manifold, you map them to say, for instance, two dimensional plane, and make an image 
these are called, called charts. So this is basically like a local map, just like in this picture. That, that like when we represent surface of Earth in plane, we have a map where we use some uh, like abstract coordinates, latitude and longitude. To represent, uh, for instance, the whole surface of globe, we use, need to have several this kind of planar images, so several charts. And then we have to say that uh, how like place in one chart, what is how it corresponds place in other chart. And these are called coordinate change maps. So reconstruction of a manifold is that we want to somehow cover it with local maps, uh, explain how different quantities that we want to image, how they look like in each map, and uh, and, and then they that say that how one map here is identified or glued together with other map. This is what reconstruction of manifold means. Now when we speak about reconstruction of a wave speed, uh, we are, are, are going to consider travel time metric. So travel time metric is the, like the time that how long it takes to go from one point uh, of the manifold to another point. And like I said, the shortest roads are called geodesics. And because the, here, in these in this images that we have, the wave speed is varying, these shortest paths, geodesics, are curved lines. And like you would somehow, like, if, like in this picture, just to consider that how to somehow measure uh, distances along Earth, uh, travel time by, by airplane, for instance, is a good measure how far the points are from each other. Now in this picture, this is just a standard like, um, like, like representation of a sphere. So this is not very interesting from a geometrical point of view, but when we go to imaging problems, how this changes. For instance, we could ask this kind of seismic problem that let's ask that how the wave speed along the surface of the Earth uh, looks like. For that, we could consider surface waves produced by earthquakes that travel along the surface. And then we somehow see lots of earthquakes. We see lots of somehow images how, travel, how uh, surface waves are traveling. One can reconstruct this kind of map that here the color tells what is the wave speed of surface waves in each location. So this is typical somehow geometrical inverse problem in two-dimensional case. We are observing waves on the surface of Earth. Uh, and, and then we have the varying wave speed and we want to somehow see that what is the value of the wave speed in each location. <coughs> so, uh, so this is a two-dimensional case. In three-dimensional <coughs> case, we would consider body waves. We could consider, for instance, either like global seismology, or we could consider this kind of like, like more local imaging problem, when there are uh, some sources that send acoustic waves, they propagate inside the Earth, they reflect, they come back to the surface where we measure the waves. So the mathematical model of this is that now we consider a three-dimensional body, like this, uh, like, like, um, like just like, like in this picture. Then we somehow are interested of, of wave speed. And wave speed is modeled by a metric that determines how the waves are propagating. We consider waves. The solution U, uh, I put UF, because when I want to somehow emphasize that the source, this wave is produced by source F. So there are waves that satisfy the wave equation, so that we have here matrix that corresponds propagation of wave, waves that they have different speed, speeds to different directions, uh, and, and it were, it's a function of, of, of x. On the boundary, here we have some sources. So the normal derivative of the solution is given. This is something that we control, and the wave vanishes at initial times. Mathematical model for boundary measurements is this type of source to solution map that maps this source, the normal derivative of the solution, to boundary value of the solution. So we control this and we measure produced waves here. So this goes mathematical formulation of this type of, of, of measurement configuration. So how we somehow <coughs> represent the Earth uh, in, in geometrical terms. Now we are somehow interested of some representing them in, in, in some kind of some coordinates that could be related to travel time. 
For instance, we could say that point here in inside the Earth, its coordinates are the travel time to the surface and the location that is closest point of the surface. These are called uh, in, in, in Earth sciences time migration coordinates. In mathematics, we call them boundary normal coordinates because we start from the boundary and go to normal direction and come to some point. So we would be interested in imaging wave speed in this uh, uh, in these coordinates. If I go back to the first slide, like this ultrasound image here, this is representation. Uh, I would could say that the wave speed, uh, if I'm from in the travel time coordinates. And if we are imaging this soil, then we could somehow like make one somehow like image here. We have local chart here, other local chart here, and then we glue them together. Then we get their abstract representation of this medium. And the next step would be then be that we want to somehow go from abstract representation to, uh, to somehow just Euclidean representation. But this is not something that I do in this talk. So how we somehow approach this type of, of problems? There are somehow nice ways to somehow uh, like, like use these kind of wave sources to focus waves. Namely, it is possible if we know only the boundary measurements, even if the medium is unknown, there are mathematical methods how one can focus waves. These are used, for instance, ultrasound surgery uh, to treat, uh, for instance, like, like cancer, for instance, or just uh, like in imaging. Here, here is somehow like two-dimensional like body where the wave spikes at some moment. So by solving some optimization problems, knowing only the source to solution map on the boundary, we can focus waves in such a way that even if at given time, they, the waves spike up. Mathematical formulation of this is the following, that we could uh, somehow specify a boundary point, and then we go from the boundary along the geodesic distance S to point Y. So we come to some point. Then by solving some quadratic optimization problems, that involve the uh, source to solution map on the boundary. It is possible to construct boundary sources here on the boundary in such a way that at time t, the solution and the solution time derivative are zero and delta distribution. So this basically means that at given time t, the energy of the wave focuses close to this point. And when I have focused all energy to single point, the wave produced by this type of this kind of initial state when all, all energy is focused is to near the single point, this is very similar to a point source. So if I look to later time moments, when I have just this all energy is focused to a single point, at later time moments, they produce a wave that starts to propagate. So basically, we can produce this kind of artificial point sources in the media. This is not very stable. But this is somehow where the mathematical like, uh, like research is, is going at this moment. How to use this? So there's also like other way how we can use the boundary measurements, the source to solution map. Just by using some simple mathematical formulas that are just Green's formulas or integration by parts, we can actually show that by using boundary measurements, one can compute the uh, L2 inner product of waves, that is just that we multiply the functions, two waves together, and integrate over x variable. Basically, this measures how like two waves interact at time t. So what we can somehow do, this is now a very rough explanation. So we could focus, use this, we could focus waves, you could use the boundary measurements to uh, obtain waves that focus to this point y1 at time, given time, and other set of waves that focus to this other point. And then, like we somehow let the time to propagate, we have like two waves, one is focused here, other is focused here. They both send this kind of uh, like waves that start to propagate, and we measure when they start to interact. When they interact, they have, the waves have traveled, traveled <coughs> half the distance, the travel time distance from y1 to y2. So this basically means that by focusing waves, 
we could somehow like put lots of these kind of artificial sources inside the domain and measure what is the travel time from one point to another. So this is somehow the motivation how in imaging problems, how the travel time, uh, like, like uh, distances could be, can be measured inside the points. Uh, so basically we can somehow like, like fill this, the domain with points and we can measure their distances with respect to the travel time metric, some non euclidean metric that we want to determine. So after this, uh, like the, so just how this type of, just a few words about history of this problem. So on, on, on 80s and, 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 and 90s, I mean that this was studied for this kind of scalar wave equation with isotropic speed by Kurilev and Berishev. And then this was somehow like studied later for like anisotropic metric by Berishev and Kurilev. With Bingham, Kurilev and Siltanen, we developed this kind of method that is, that is based on focusing of waves. This was a relatively abstract study, but very recently, De Hoop, Kepli, and Oxanen, they somehow made this, like, this kind of realistic algorithm that can be numerically implemented so that you can really somehow like, like, like do this, kind of, at least simul with simulated data, you can do this kind of focusing. There are also results that concern uh, reconstructions on, on, on when you have measurements on part of the boundary. And I want to emphasize, because here's lots of space studies uh, somehow represented, that similar type of methods can be also somehow used to image space-time by considering inverse problems for Einstein equations. So let me move forward. So the earlier like the talk to this far, I wanted to say that to do imaging in medical or seismic sciences, we somehow like we are interested of travel time metric that determines the wave speed in the medium. And we can then consider the model where we somehow like 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 have a lot of sample points, and we can measure distances between these points. And we are interested of finding a non-Euclidean metric. That's what we do. So now let me go to manifold learning. So traditionally, manifold learning is considered in the way that you have lots of data points in high-dimensional Euclidean space. Here is for this kind of Swiss roll. Uh, uh, Curve. And if you have this data in very, very high dimensional space, often you want to somehow visualize this data by forcing the mapping it to low dimensional space. This is dimensionality re uh, reduction. <coughs> and the, the main goal in the traditional manifold learning is that you have lots of points, possible with some errors, and then you want to um, like, like fit them to some smooth surface. And in dimensional reduction, you want to somehow represent this surface with a uh, like lower dimensional model. So in multidimensional scaling, you could ask, if you start that you have like points, sample points in, in very high dimensional space. For instance, if this, are, this each point, sample point here is for instance a photograph consisting of 1,000 times 1,000 pixels, then you are considering actually uh, like, like this kind of points in uh, D-dimensional space, where D is 1,000 times 1,000, so 1 million dimensional space. So to somehow represent this kind of data in lower dimensional model, one often somehow uses some kind of stress function that one minimizes. One tries to find points y, j in, in lower dimensional space, Rm, so that the mutual distances of y, j to y, k are in this lower dimensional space, they are the same as this, this Euclidean distance of the data points in, in like large dimensional space. So more uh, developed version of this is so-called isomap algorithm that tries to learn uh, like the metric, not, not, not this Euclidean diametric between points, but this uh, metric along the surface. If we somehow do this kind of imaging, we are interested of the travel time metric, so the metric is, is measured along this abstract surface. Then what one, 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 one does is that one takes these kind of data points. For each point, one defines k nearest neighbors. 
makes the graphs of these distances, and 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 then tries to somehow and makes the optimization. Uh, sorry, uses some like this disk algorithm or some graph theoretical algorithm to get the graph distance with this uh, like this graph where you have only like local connections, and this is approximation of this uh, like uh, like distance along the surface. With these distances, then one uses these, these distances multidimensional scaling and tries to embed this to uh, lower dimensional space. For instance, here in this case, case to play. The difficulty of this is that if you would have ideal data, that if you have, would have data that fills the uh, whole surface and you have, would have perfect distances, if you use to start to solve this type of non-convex optimization problem, and if you get a solution that, that some solution, some points that give uh, like, uh, like that minima is zero, then you have a constructed actually embedding of the abstract manifold to lower dimensional space so that the Euclidean distances of these embedded points of the manifold, they are the, uh, these geodesic distances between points. This implies that the curvature of the our original surface is zero. So it, this, this flat surface that is somehow embedded to uh, like high dimensional space. This works very nicely to this Swiss surface or that type of surface, but when we are doing like medical imaging, then the, like the, the body that we are imaging, the travel time metric is not flat at all. It, has, it, it may have like bumps. And if you are interested of the intrinsic metric, we have to do something else. And that is what I'm going to next describe. And let, so now we can, could somehow start from the, somehow the, the, from the beginning. We can just consider abstract uh, like, like data set. We know that this data set is to consist somehow like, like we have points on a manifold and we want to somehow obtain the manifold and we want to find the metric along, uh, along this, this manifold. So let us consider some uh, like manifolds that satisfy reasonable geometrical bounds. First, that the curvature of the manifold is bounded, the diameter is bounded, and then injectivity radius, which basically means that if you look at, uh, at, if you take a point on the manifold and you put there some kind of polar or spherical coordinates, what is the radius where you can use uh, like, uh, like radial coordinate, uh, this kind of uh, Riemannian normal coordinates or polar coordinates on this surface? So that we are seeing that, that there are like that this, uh, there are small balls where we have nice coordinates that and the, that each point has a neighborhood with radius is at least i zero where we have nice coordinates. Then we are going to sample point the sample points from this manifold. So let us assume that we have probability distribution mu on this surface, and we start to sample points from here. So which I take like first point. So let me go here. So we actually are going to start with, I take, uh, I take uh, independent samples uh, from the probability distribution on this manifold, like this. I take one point, second point, third, fourth, and fifth point, and so on. I take lots of them. Then I measure the distances between these points along the surface. So I, I measure the geodesic distances. And then I add their measurement errors. And these measurement errors can be quite large. I just assume that the expectation of the error is zero. Uh, the variance is, is, is finite, and I, I, I don't know this sigma squared. And also the, these kind of exponential moments are also assumed to be finite. For instance, Gaussian noise, that uh, like satisfies these conditions. And I assume that the, this sampling of these points and the measurement errors they are independent. And these are now my data. I am given this type of matrix and nothing else. And I want to reconstruct this surface and a metric on it. So here is our result. Um, so that if we assume that we are given the dimension, then this geometrical bound of the manifold, we are given uh, like, like, like this constant that tells that that the probability this density is bounded from above and below by these constants, and then this uh, like like statistical parameters of the noise. Then there are some constants, so that the following holds. Let me fix a theta that is the probability that I, I obtain a wrong reconstruction. 
And if I have any manifold that satisfies the geometrical bounds that the curvature's bound did and so on, then with probability one minus theta, so with large probability, the noisy distances of randomly sampled points with errors, they, they determine a Riemannian manifold, assuming that I sample enough of these points. The number of points that I have to choose, it's given here. I come later to this uh, interpretation of this. So if I have so many sample points, then I can reconstruct an abstract manifold with the abstract matrix. So these are like basically constructed in terms of local charts. So that there is a like a smooth map from the constructed manifold to the original manifold, so that all distances uh, like measured here and the, uh, the ratio to the um, to the uh, original distances, um, sorry, original, the distances, original distances, uh, they the raised to the reconstructed distances bounded by L, where L is one plus uh, constant times some small error parameter. The sectional curvature of the reconstructed manifold is bounded by the, uh, like the constant times the bound for the original manifold, and the injectivity radius also will be close to the original manifold. Let me go back to this, uh, like how many points we need. So we want basically to reconstructions with error delta. So then I need one over delta to power three n. Uh, so like, and, 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 and then here, here is important term, the pro wrong probability that the, prob sorry, the probability that I obtain a wrong reconstruction, this theta, it appears only in this logarithmic term. So if I make this theta very, very small, small, so for instance, I divide theta by, by 10, then the number of the points doesn't grow very much. So this is, is a kind of like regime where I want to somehow do reconstruction in such a way that I'm extremely sure of the fact that I make a, a good reconstruction. So basically, I know we need this many points. I measure noisy distances between all sample points, and then I can reconstruct uh, the travel time metric with, with uh, this kind of multiplicative error, where the error has the size C1 constant times delta, and delta appears here. So let me give a feature how geometry uh, is used to solve this type of problems. So, uh, in, so in geometry we look distances. So let us consider this type of distance functions. So that, that uh, I take a point from the manifold and Rz is a point, uh, sorry, Rz is the, the function that, that maps any point x of the manifold <coughs> to the distance of z to x. So like this, these are these points of the manifold, I consider this distance. So I identify a point z with the distance function. Then I consider something that I called a rough distance function. This is the, uh, this kind of L2, uh, like norm of the difference of, of the distance functions squared. So what I do here is that I like take point Y and point Z. Then I measure like this distance minus this distance. And then I start to move this point X around. I integrate over X. This is the probability distribution, so the total mass is one. So I get average of these distances. Then by using geometry, we can see that this rough distance function, this here, actually this, this squared distance, this can be bounded by the squared distance from one side and from the other side, the squared distance times a positive constant. So this roughly estimates how these points Y and Z are close to each other. So how I then start to somehow now combine statistics and geometry? Let me divide the data set that I have to two, three sets. Three sets like S1, S2, S3, where the number of points in I, in, so like N1 in S1, they are ordered in this way. So I have, this S1 has a lot of points. I call it a dense set. 
S2 has like medium amount of points, so it's called medium dense set, and S3 has quite little points, so it's called the coarse set. And now I want to somehow like, like, like actually reconstruct distances in this coarse set with very small error. So how we do, um, like we, we, we do the, the, the proof is basically an algorithm. So I use this very dense set of points to reconstruct uh, this kind of approximative, uh, like rough distances between points in the medium dense set. So I take points, this xj, xk in this medium dense set, and then I start to sample over the very dense set, and I look at these differences of the distances, that this has noise, and take the average of them and subtract this uh, two times the variance of the noise. Why this is somehow like interesting? And then somehow the, how this somehow is related to classical estimates in machine learning. So I recall that I somehow, by using sample data, I have here these noisy distances, the difference squared, average of them, and, and like subtract this quantity. And this here were the noisy distances. If I consider what is the expectation of, 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 of these terms, it turns out that the expectation of this term, this here where the distance is plus noise, the expectation of this is actually this rough, this dis difference of L2 norms of distance functions plus term that comes from the noise. This was denoted by this kappa here. So this thing quantity that I sample here, this here is closely related to this rough distance functions. And we can actually prove that if we are somehow, like, like now I for simplicity consider the noise model where the noise is bounded by some large number, then the sampled rough distances and this, uh, like, uh, like, and this true rough distances that I have defined by this norm here, they are very close to each other with large probability. Namely, by using Höfding's inequality that I explain in the next slide, the sampled distance, rough distances minus the true sample distances, the probability that this is smaller than epsilon is one minus something that is exponential of something. And here is sample number of sample points. Because of this exponential function, this probability is extremely small. So I can very reliable find rough distances. So what this Höfding's inequality is, so this is somehow very much used uh, like throughout machine learning. So it says that if I have independent identically distributed copies of a random variable z, and the random variables uh, get values in interval 0, 1, then with any epsilon, the average of these samples minus the average of this random variable, this is more than epsilon with very large probability. This is a kind of generalization of a, this kind of like, uh, like a tail estimate that how much probability there is tail uh, in the tail of the Gaussian uh, run, like, like basically when the average, like this kind of independent quantities, we are somehow considering normal distribution. So like then we can ask that how much there is tail in the normal distribution. This is gets very, very small, exponentially small when we go further and further away from the uh, further and further away from the expectation. So, so this is somehow the estimate that actually starts to like, like lead to very strong like results when we do the reconstructions. So let me recall, we had the result that we can somehow find rough distances of sample points in very large uh, probability. Now, how to use these rough distances? They are not true distances. We had the estimate that the rough distances is bounded by the squared of the true distance from one side and from other side constant times the true distance. So if I consider the ball defined by the rough distance, so this ellipsoid here, it is between a small metric ball and this metric ball. And this is something like, like that in mathematical analysis we they like very much that we somehow like have some objects that are bounded between two beautiful, like, like well-defined objects. 
Okay. Now we can go from rough distances to true distances. In the way that if I somehow interested here is point say here is point uh, y2, here is somewhere point y1. I take define uh, this kind of row distance so that I take the ball rough ball using the rough metric. I take this ellipsoidal ball centered at point y1 with radius rho, and then I compute average of these distances. I take this distance to all points inside this ellipsoid and take the average of this. This is something that I cannot compute from my data, but I can somehow compute very similar type of quantity from, from my data. Namely, I take all points uh, in this, uh, this medium dense net, that sample points that are here, and I compute I take the, uh, these noisy distances from this point to this given point, and I take average over all points in this neighborhood. Here can, I can use again Hefting's inequality to see that like these sample distances that are row averaged minus these true row average distances, they are almost the same. There's some error delta one, and this holds with large probability. And this, we can estimate this uh, like error, this uh, row one, sorry, delta one that appears here, so that when the this uh, like the uh, like the, the size of this ellipsoid goes to zero, this goes to zero. So the, the summarizing of to this far what we have done is that we can somehow like use this like a quite slot data set, and we take a smaller portion of it. And in the smaller portion that I call the coordinate, I can find by sampling this kind of approximative row average distances so that uh, this uh, reconstructed distances minus the true distances of the points is smaller than delta one with large probability. Now I can forget all statistics. Namely, I can consider that I have uh, some nice set of points that are quite dense set of the of, of of the, of the surface, and there I know the distances with small deterministic error. So I have reduced this problem where I have, I have uh, where I have uh, like we start, started with sample points with large random random like errors in distances. Now we have reduced it that we have reduced the number of the points where we have information, but we have small deterministic errors. And our earlier result with, with, with Pfefferman, Ivano Kurilev, and Naranayal was that, that if <coughs> we have a compact, like, uh, so, so like bounded, n dimensional manifold, so the curvature is bounded, and the injectivity radius satisfies some very, somehow, like mild condition, then if I have a sample points there that are delta dense, which means that their delta neighborhood is the whole manifold. If for the sample points I have the, I know the distances with small deterministic error, then I can construct uh, like a new compact n-dimensional manifold with some intrinsic metric tensor in such a way that there is a different morphism from the constructed manifold to the true manifold so that these distances are, are, like, are, are close to each other, the L here, is one plus small error. Sectional curvature somehow behaves very well, and the injectivity radius also satisfies this kind of estimates. So this means that, that the manifold M and the constructive manifold M star are very close to each other. And now we are somehow interested, like in these imaging problems, we are interested of so foreign travel time metrics. So we have a manifold and, and we have intrinsic like metric there that measures for instance, if I go to the very beginning, in this picture, we reconstruct, for instance, the globe, surface of the, of the Earth, and, and then we are interested in the metric that, that tells that how, what is the travel time of wave, uh, how fast waves travel from one point to another. So we have two objects, the manifold, and then the metric and these are like different objects that we want to reconstruct.
So I just uh, show very quickly what type of like what is the idea of this type of reconstructions. We have this kind of sample, discrete set of sample points, these dead points, and we know distances between the points with small error. What we do is that we take first, like like uh, in this our data set, I take like balls, and then I embed take each point ball here, and I map them to Euclidean space. So the algorithm is actually here in this page. So I assume that I have uh, some like uh, discrete set of points and distances between these points. And these are, are somehow close to true distances. First, I take, uh, I, I've defined the parameter r, what size of balls I'm considering. Then I take uh, like, like, like r over 100 separated subset of my data set. I use these origins of, of balls. And then I, I, I can, like, I know that, like, that the, the, in this data set that I consider as a discrete metric space, I can take balls of radius one, and they, they, I know that they are close to Euclidean balls. So I choose disjoint Euclidean balls, and I construct this kind of like delta road, uh, sorry, I construct delta isometric maps, almost isometric maps, from this discrete uh, like, like balls to Euclidean balls. So I basically map these discrete balls to Euclidean uh, spaces, balls in Euclidean space. <coughs> Some of these balls, balls intersect here. So these are basically like local charts. I want to somehow then construct a map that, that somehow tells that how I identify uh, like, uh, like these local coordinates and these local coordinates. So what we do is that we construct affine isometries so that mappings that are like constant plus linear map, so that this, uh, this uh, transition maps that change coordinates from one chart to another chart, they are almost, that, that they are like, I find affine maps that almost identify points in correct way in two different charts. Then here, I now have basically represented a manifold with local charts, and I have somehow approximative uh, the functions that are affine that change coordinates from here to here. Now I want to take these, money, these local pieces and, and map them to a little bit higher dimensional space and glue them together. And there we use so-called classical Whitney embedding, where we use this type of uh, like, uh, like smooth cutoff functions that basically say, tell that like, like if the like, like this cutoff function, sorry, this smooth cutoff functions, they are zero if the balls are far away. If they almost overlap, then this is practically one in the intersection. And, 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 and now I take these linear parts of the coordinate transformation functions, multiply them with this cutoff function. So I locally embed uh, the manifold of dimension n, a chart of, of, of it, all charts of it to n plus one dimensional space. Then I take all these representations together and make a long, long vector of them. I basically, this means that I embed the local charts to m dimensional space where m is not very large. So I embed these pieces to these blue curves here so that if these two balls intersected, then these corresponding blue curves here, they are close to each other. Now I have a data set in a Euclidean space. I interpolate them to a surface by using traditional machine learning techniques. So we somehow like, I use some other algorithms that show, so just show the picture in the next slide. And, and, and I take this blue like data sets that I have constructed, I interpolate them to the smooth manifold. I construct an orthogonal normal projector to the manifold. So what I did, I took these discrete sets, I identified them with local charge. Local charge were embedded to high dimensional space, these blue sets. Blue sets are interpreted to smooth red surface. And then I have constructed some nice smooth manifold. To find the metric on this manifold, I take metric here and push it forward in these maps 
and glue them together by using somehow smooth uh, uh, weighted average, this. And then I get the metric here. One last thing I want to say that how we do this type of, the, how the blue sets are somehow interpreted to, source, to the surface. We usually actually construct this type of map when we have some kind of data set in a high dimensional space. And then we locally start to, we somehow fit here some planes. And, and then we take a, uh, just a combination, a convex combination of, of locally of a map that um, that, that uh, like is, uh, is far away is identity map, and in this region, it is uh, is a, 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 a orthogonal project. So I would take convex combinations of identity map and orthogonal projectors, and in this way I can take this data set and squeeze it <coughs> locally by piece by piece to smooth surfaces. Altogether, this construction. <coughs> So altogether, this construction gives that when I have some like, like, like deterministic, uh, so I have some points, deterministic points that fill the manifold with small errors, then I can somehow make abstract interpolation like I explained to construct a smooth manifold and construct a smooth metric so that like, the manifold and the metric are so-called like, like Lipschitz close to the original, original manifold. So summarizing, to somehow do this kind of medical imaging, where we are interested of 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 uh, of, of abstract like 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 met, uh, metric that corresponds travel time metric, what we do is that we somehow like like first somehow measure travel times between different points with large random errors. Then we somehow do this kind of sampling and averaging to go to case when we have smaller set of points with small deterministic errors in the distances, and then we basically glue manifold from the local representations.